Amen. So that uh, we can we can we can deposit, we can we can inv- we can invest, and we can. There's a pool. There'll be a pour. Amen. So we'll be able to pour out some things. Amen. And those that don't know, we're not just the apostolic covering for Heavenly Hope in all of the campuses, or also for the Gift Fellowship. Amen. Grace International Fellowship of Truth. But we also license professional Christian therapists. Amen. But we have our own practice with two locations. Amen. Um, and one area of um, specialization that we've operated in for some time now is in interpersonal relationship. Amen. And interpersonal relationship also includes marriage counseling, premarital counseling, and relationship therapy, things of that nature. So this is going to be some, amen, that's true about you? <laughs> Hallelujah. So this, this is not like for you to get quiet and, 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 and Joe, play uh, Keith Sweat. Uh, we do them like Siri. Play Keith, uh, play Tony, 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 it's my anniversary. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. No, we got multiple water. Derek, come get one of these waters. Amen. Glory to God. We got too many. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about right there. All right, Joe, just save that. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey, amen. Because uh, turn it over a little bit. Hit that again, Joe. Turn it over a little bit. Amen. If you marry, if you marry, just raise your hand real quick. Amen. If you marry with your spouse, amen, glory, that they're here right now. If they're not here, that's fine. But if they are here, I want you to stand up really quickly and get you a slow dance real quick with your spouse. Just real quick. Real quick. Just real quick. Real quick. Just play it, Joe. Amen. Real quick. All right. That's it, everybody. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Johnny got the, I mean, hands starts going all low and stuff. Amen. Amen. Derek got one leg up. Amen. 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 I don't act like that when her dad would be around. Amen. I'm, I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. Enjoy, son. Amen. Amen. Be fruitful and multiply. All right. So, amen. Um, <laughs> prioritizing your marriage, and we're going to talk about how important it is to make your marriage the priority. It, it has to be the priority. It has to be one of the most important things that you have in your life, period. And um, outside of God, I'm going to say it has to be the most important thing. Amen. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But we're going to look at the scripture first. Let's start off with Genesis 2 and 24. Amen. Now, I want you to really, if you get some good questions that pop up, you don't have to be married. You don't have to be dating. Amen. You could be single as a Pringle ready to mingle. Amen. Glory to God. But if you got a question, if you got a question... Just jot your question down real quick. Put it in your phone or something because at the end of this, we're going to open the floor up to, um, to talk about it. It's right there on the screen, everybody. Amen. And this is what it says. Come on, read it with me. And it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife. Now, I want, y'all to, I want you to get the context of what is happening here. This is Genesis chapter 2. In Genesis chapter 1, God creates a spirit man that has dominion. Then he gets in chapter 2, and he creates a body for that spirit man from chapter 1 to live in. Then he gives that man assignment. That man has work. That man has um, a location. Amen. Glory to God. Of a, where he abide or abode. Amen. Glory to God. A place of living. Amen. In the garden. Then he has um, a relationship with God. Those are three things. And then God puts that man to sleep. And pulls and take a rib and pulls out a woman, amen, a wound man, amen, a woman. Somebody say amen. amen. So God pulls out this woman and then gives them to him. And this is God giving Adam wedding, wedding vows. The very first thing God says to Adam when he presents this woman to Adam is, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. I'm talking about he gave Adam dominion. He gave Adam an assignment. He has a relationship with Adam. And he says, Adam, now from this moment forward, she has to be your priority. Whoa, glory to God. Y'all got quiet right there. That's God giving wedding vows. Amen. All right. But when Adam showed up, when, when God, when, I mean, when, by the time Eve showed up, Adam had three things. He had a relationship with God. He had a place to stay. And he had a job. All my single ladies, that should be your criteria for a man. You should already have a relationship with God. You should already have a place to stay. 
Amen. And you should already have a job. Amen. There's no sense in me in you. Amen. I'm not going to marry no man, but there's no sense in you marrying a man. Amen. Believing he going to get it together down the line. Amen. Everybody got something to work on, but I mean, it, it, you need at least this. Amen. And fellas, we should not be willing to take on any responsibility um, until we get those three things in place. Amen. In other words, don't play with our time. Don't waste her time. Amen. Glory to God. Don't waste her time. She's there to help something, and if you're not doing nothing, she don't have nothing to help with. Amen. So when God brings it to Adam, he says, Adam, he says, here you are. Adam doesn't have a father or mother physically. So God is setting the stage for everything that come behind him. He doesn't even physically have a father and mother. He said, listen. Your mom and dad ain't going to be more important than this. Your relationship with them is not going to be more important than this. That's, that's scary to a lot of people. If we don't take on God's mind. We want to be married, but we don't want to do it God's way. But we want God results. I want this thing to work, Lord. I mean, so we ask God to come bless our mess. Amen. We ask him to come bless our mess. I done made a mess of this thing. I, I done set it up on the wrong foundation. And everything and listen, marriage doesn't work. Right there. Let's take a look. Okay, let me start talking about it. Amen. Lord, are you familiar with that? Are you are you are you just talking about it? Are you familiar with that? 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 It's the highest form of relationship. Amen. Glory to God. You want to talk about that a little bit? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So when we say top tier relationship, we're talking about um, if there's a high rise building and there's 25 floors and your marriage is on the 25th floor and the only person that's in that floor with you is your husband or your wife, mm. not your children, not your parents, not your family. Not your church, not your apostle. No. You and your husband or you and your wife. Top tier. It's a top tier relationship. Now, every, everything else comes under that. Now, I know it's the lady in this room that's saying that that's very scary because I got my kids and my kids, my heart, and my kids, my life. And I, you know, so to that, I say, why would you marry a man that won't put your kids or make your kids a priority? Amen. That's a deal breaker right there. If you can't make him top tier and, and trust that he will make your kids top tier, then that's a deal breaker. He's not the one. Amen. Glory to God. He, he's, not, he's not the one if he's not going to do that. Amen. Glory to God. The old people said this way. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God that you get the cow and the, and the calf. Amen. Glory to God. So you have, to, you have to prioritize that. So it's the top tier. She said that it's, it's 25 floors. Say, so you, picture yourself getting the, catching the elevator. You ride in the elevator, you get on the elevator, the elevator got 25 floors. And if you open that door, and if there's anybody on that floor other than your spouse, amen, they are on the wrong floor. Now, as she said, it, it's, it's kind of scary to do this, especially when you have kids or when you have other things. But see, we prioritize everything else. We prioritize everything else. But our kids need to see us prioritize our marriage. We had this attitude with our kids, our grandkids, and even our dog and granddog. <laughs> that, uh, uh, should, I, should I say how, how we, our attitude is? Hey, man, we just, we, yeah, yeah. Man, man, forget them kids. We'll jump them kids. That's our attitude. We tell our kids, we'll jump y'all. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> see, y'all laughing now because y'all kids still young, but when see them adult kids, y'all better learn it because they will say forget you so quick. Amen. Oh, they, they listen. Come on Because now. this is what you're going to do. You're going to throw all your energy, all your time, your all your effort, life. everything into your child, your child, your child. Uh -huh. Your child going to move to Dallas, going to marry somebody. They're going to have their own family. They're going to move back to Baton Rouge. And you ain't going to be at the wedding. And you ain't going to be important no more. You ain't going to be at the wedding and everything. And then I'm just joking, y'all. I'm just joking. That's Kelsey's story in case y'all want to know who that was. 
Amen. But your kids are going to grow up and find somebody they love. Yeah. And then you're going to be like, who am I? What do I, what do I like? What I don't know what I like. I don't know what I want to do because you gave your whole self into this child and you lost you. Amen. Or if you marry, you put your whole self into the kids and your spouse like, hey, hey, I'm over here. Don't worry about it. You know, eventually, you know. Don't worry about it. And there, there's normally the <laughs> women that put themselves into their kids yeah. like that. What the men do, the men throw themselves into their work. And they become workaholics. Amen. I want to show you that. Listen what God did with Adam. God brought Adam on his, God gave Adam work. And that's why men, it's easier for us to work than it is for us to be intimate. I didn't say have intercourse. There's a huge difference. And having intercourse and being intimate. Hey, man, Johnny, come, come sit by your wife, man. I mean, no, Tina, go sit by Johnny so he can put his arm around her. Hey, man. It's coaching shift. Hey, man. You see how she got excited about you putting her arm around Johnny? If I'd have just said, go sit by Johnny, she'd have been like, yeah. But I said, so you can put his arm around her. I'm on my way. Hey, man. Hey, man, them pink shoes got to moving. Hey, man. <laughs> Glory to God. So, men, it's easier for us to just work because we, we gain value from accomplishments. So we think we're most important if we're accomplishing some stuff. And we're like, well, I mean, I'm a good husband. Why, why, why are you a good husband? I provide. Amen. Glory, glory to God. That, uh, you could be a good husband or a good parent. Amen. Glory to God. You can be a good philanthropist. Amen. Glory to God. Um, but it's going to determine if you can be intimate. If you can do the hard thing. If you can get off work and then sit down and have a conversation about how the day went. I don't want to talk. I'm going to be honest. I don't want to talk when I get off work. Amen. She want to talk. No, I want to rub feet. <laughs> we gonna Why y'all acting so rubbing. holy right now? We're going to talk while you're rubbing. Or there we go. No Amen. Rubbing. See, I don't get to rub feet if I don't talk. Right. So I don't necessarily want to talk, but she wants to talk. <laughs> Apostle Craig Comanche told me once before, amen. He's like, well, if you don't like doing it, he wasn't talking to me. He was just saying some, somebody shared with him. I don't even know if you remember this. They, good news was over downtown then. And he said, um, do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? I was like, I want to be happy. He said, he was telling him, an older man told him that. He said, the older man told him this then. He said, the older man said, then you might not like to do it, but do you like her? And if you like her, then do it. Right. Amen. So that's enough for us to get motivated to do it. Yeah. Same thing. Amen. Glory to God. My wife is the same way that um, she, she a football fan, but she wasn't into it like that. She wasn't into it like like learning the plays and everything. And, and now she be said, I, I like football. I like that. I like sports. So she watches so much now. She'll be like, oh, they're going to run the ball. They got three people in the backfield. Let's talk about the Lakers because I really love you because I, I watch them. When they not playing the Celtics. Hey, too much. I, I almost, I'm almost, I'm almost winning her over. Amen. No, no, no. I'm almost winning her over. You know, so she I don't like every the thing, but I like him. Every so now and then, it. she'll be like, she'll be like, come on, AD. What you doing? Amen. Glory to God. Because, I mean, we, we, we do it together. You can see people that it's going to come a time in your marriage where you're going to, it's going to have to stand the test of liking one another. Notice I didn't say loving one another. <laughs> like, listen, just because you love them don't mean it's good. It's not good till you like them. That's right. Amen. Amen. You can love crack. Oh. It don't mean Jeez. you should smoke it. <laughs> am, I, am I making sense? So I don't just I don't just love my wife. I like my wife. I like being around. I like talking to her. So we share things. We the, we the people that when something happened in public, we tap each other like, oh, we're going to talk about this one later on. <laughs> we, we, you saw that, baby? <laughs> we look at each other, get eye contact. If we saw it, amen. This is our conversation on the way home. We saw that. that because that, that, that we like each other. We, we, we communicate with each other. And we get on each other's nerves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But nobody else getting off on that floor. Even if we get off on get on each other's nerves. And you'll be amazed. You say, Well, my wife is the only one on this floor, my husband is the only one on this floor, until you they not the first person you call when something good happens. Right. Right. 
No, you just got off the elevator and somebody else on the, whoever you just called don't belong on that floor. This is just the intro. This is just the intro. All right, the second thing, I'll move on so we can get to some <laughs> questions. I see how y'all looking at me like. So the second thing about God's design for your marriage is that marriage doesn't work unless it's a priority. Mm -hmm. Write this down. This would be good to say. Every dysfunction brings a malfunction. This is what I mean by that, Malika, that uh, a dysfunction is when something's not working according to its design. A malfunction is when it breaks down. Say, for instance, your car take oil. Your car tells you what kind of oil to take. 0W30 or 5W30 or 10W30 or whatever it is. It tells you what kind of oil to take. It's in the owner's manual. It comes with the design and instruction. All right. So let's say that, I mean, one day you just want to wake up and you want to go put some Crisco cooking oil. <laughs> Pull the top off. It, that's, that, that's my commercial for ladies. Amen. It's good to have a man that know your Crisco don't go in your, in your car. Amen. You know, this, this women's moment, you know, <laughs> I don't need no man. Amen. Put that grease in your car then. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> So, amen. <laughs> I'm just joking, y'all. So, if you do that and you put in there, that's dysfunctional. What's going to happen to the car? It's going to malfunction. It's going to break down. And the same thing is true with everything. God has a design for it. So, if I do it the wrong way, I can't be upset when it breaks down. And the relationship is going to break down if I'm putting the wrong stuff in it. And marriage is not designed to work. It don't work unless it's a priority. It won't work putting anything above it. I clap Amen. with you. Amen. Glory to God. And you saying I got all this stuff to do. Uh, I'm a, when I get home, I'm going to take care of everything I need to take care of when I get home. But I'm going to do all this stuff first. It's not making your marriage a priority. Priority is having that calendar. The way you put your work schedule on that calendar, the way you put your appointments on that calendar, is putting your marriage on the calendar. Day nights. Um, if you know you've been working all day and you've been in your office all day and you know it's coming up to 7 o'clock and you say, hey, I ain't been with my wife, uh, sitting on the sofa with my wife all day. You need to get up, stop whatever you're doing and say, this is going to be here tomorrow. Let me go spend some time with her. And I don't know if ladies do this, but men, you getting up and going in there with her and laying on her shoulder and then five minutes later you snoring is not spending time with her. <laughs> That's that. That's tough. It's not. And tell her, oh, baby, you just feel so good. You make me so relaxed. No. Why you sleep when you was in that office? Why you sleep when you was at work? That's not making your marriage a priority. No, no, that's, it's funny, but that's true. Come on, keep preaching, girl. You're preaching good. You're preaching good. You're preaching good. Hey, man, because that's, that's true. That's, that's, not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not a priority. I mean, because now you're saying, well, I got to do this, I got to do this. Well, I got to do this. What, what you say? Well, these people are counting on me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Your very first ministry is your marriage. Amen. 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 All of you, amen, that are married, I just now, in the name of Jesus, by the authority, of, by the power of God invested in me, <laughs> amen, made you a marriage ministry pastor, amen, <laughs> of your own house. <laughs> amen. Amen. When you got something going on in your house, amen, counsel yourself the way you would counsel somebody else with their marriage. Right. That's good. That's good. What would I tell them? What do I tell somebody else? You, you, you are your marriage ministry pastor now. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. The third thing is marriage is an exclusive bond with exclusive demands. Yeah. That's good. <clears throat> I like to say it this way, that they're, they're not – People call me, one of my pet peeves is this. Somebody called me and say, Chatea called me and say, Apostle, what you doing? I'm never going to tell you what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm always going to say why, what you need. That's a pet peeve of mine. Hey, what you doing? Why, what you need? There are, there's only two people that can tell me, ask me what you doing. But three, my mama, my daughter, my wife. They're the only ones that can say, what you doing? Everybody else, you don't need to know what I'm doing. Oh, where you at? That's the one that give me like, hey, where you at? Why? Why? 
Yeah. So <laughs> y'all looking at me like I'm tripping now. Hey, what you doing? Don't start the conversation now because I'm going to respond with it. What you need? I'm going to let you know. But even, see, you see, you got exclusive. My mama, my daughter, my wife. But even my daughter can't ask, Daddy, how much money, how much, how much money you got over there? Why? You don't get to ask me those kind of questions. That's exclusive. There are certain things that your spouse should only have access to you about. That's the point that I'm making. Hey, Amen. If you just speak, treat your spouse as one of the members of the family. Y'all quiet. Hey, Amen. It's going to break down. It's an Let me break it down this way. There are four different kinds of love the Bible talks about. When it says the word love, it talks about Greek. It talks about agape. Agape means unconditional, right? Hey Amen. You don't know you have unconditional love until they got conditions that show up. So you can say, I got agape love. I love my spouse with the love of God until conditions show up, and you have to show unconditional love then. Hey Amen. The next one is phileo. That's where we get the term Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Everybody got that? All right, that's kindred bond, that's family, that's you and your kinfolk. I said that as country as I could because I'm country. All right. <laughs> then after that is storage, that's a, in a love by association. That's me having a love for a coworker. If something happened to him, be like, oh, man, what happened to him? Man, I hate that it happened to him. That, that's, that's storage. Then there's eros. Eros is the love between a husband and a wife. It's, that's where we get the term erotic from. Amen. Nobody else. I can have storage for a lot of people. I can have agape for everybody, and I can even have phileo for kinfolk. But don't nobody supposed to get my arrows. Exclusive. You got that? Amen. Storage, like storage. Amen. S-T-O-R-A-G-E. Amen. Glory to God. So that, that form of love is something that you have. You have a bond with one another. My, my, my wife has exclusive domain. Exclusive, because it's an exclusive bond. It's not like any other bond. I love my mom. I'm a mama's boy. Talk to my mama almost every time I get in the car. When we're going somewhere, I just I'm call my mama. Hey, what you doing? What you got? I love my mama. One day my mama not going to be here. I'm just going to talk to my mama as much as I can now. Amen. 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 Glory Amen. to God. But my mama don't have access to this floor. Not my daughter, not my granddaughter, not my... If I'm in another room and I hear my wife say to Zoe more than two times, Zoe, stop. Zoe, stop. I'm coming out of the room and say, you didn't hear my wife talking to you? Ask, I've done it. You didn't hear my wife talking to you? You don't get to disrespect her. When she tell you to stop, I tell it to our grown kids. Am I right, Kev? I tell it to our grown kids. I tell it to our dog. When Fancy say, when she tell Fancy to stop more than one time, I come in there. Hey, and Fancy, no, am I right? Fancy, no, don't play with him about his wife. <laughs> Fan, Fancy be barking back, so Fancy talk back. Fancy, Fancy just like, oh, Fancy a little, Fancy a little flip at the mouth, amen. So Fancy be like, I ain't nobody finna mess with your little wife. <laughs> amen, glory to God. That's how Fancy be acting. When she barking, amen, glory to God. But I'm, t no, don't, don't do that, amen, glory to God. I'm her protector. I'm the one that's going to come to her aid. And the worst thing you can do is talk about Johnny Young around her. She looks short. She looks sweet. Amen. I'm telling you that she's the opposite of all of them. She's not short for real. <laughs> I'm a giant in the spirit. And, and she's not sweet for real. <laughs> I'm very sweet. Amen. Mess with her husband. Amen. Glory I to God. I don't play. And it's, it's supposed to be that way. It's supposed to be exclusive. It's supposed to be exclusive. And watch this. You live in a world where they don't promote that. So when you start getting people that like your post of the opposite sex, they like your post multiple times but can't like it when y'all together, hey amen, you have to see that and say, hey, this is a problem right here. Hey amen, glory to God. You have, you, have, you have to protect the exclusiveness of it. In fact, some stuff can't even go on social media. It can't go on there because it's exclusive. Amen. Speaking of um, not going, um, also, uh, ladies, you know, I'm going to say, ladies, me and y'all, y'all gossip too on the low. But, ladies, you know how we want to get on that phone? Not out here 
Y'all be talking. Y'all, no, they be at the barbershop. We be at the barbershop. Y'all be talking, though. Yeah, they barbershop talking. Talk. <laughs> you know, gotcha. But listen, there's not another person that needs to know everything that's going on in, in your marriage. Amen. You don't need to get on the phone with your girlfriend or your guy friends and say, man, or, man, you, man, I'm, man, let me tell you what happened, man. Uh, you know, or, you know, you even have to watch opposite sex. They'll be like, oh, what's wrong with you? You look like you. They, they're trying to. No, don't worry about I got him. He all right. Ask somebody else what's wrong with them. He frustrated, you know? he mad, but he all right. He, he's I all got right. It. Even if his frustration came from over here, you worry about yourself. You ain't going to so, cry nobody else. <laughs> no, no. And, and, but we have to be yourself. careful that we don't overshare. You know, we, we feel in some type of way. Our emotions, you know, feel all out of whack, and our mouth just start going, no. Guard your mouth. You definitely don't be the one, the woman that they talk about that will tear down with her own hands. You build up your marriage with your mouth. Amen. 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 And, 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 and a lot of things, the enemy will try to slip in because deception affairs in a marriage come from deception. And the deception, I'm, tell, I'm finna tell you, I'm finna give you the game now. The deception is chemistry. All you got to do is build a little chemistry and the enemy will have you think it's something else worth chasing. So when you get to work and everything, y'all, 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 you already spent eight hours together. Hey, man, do not accept the food, ladies. Don't let them buy you lunch. That's not a work husband. That's an emotional affair. Amen. Glory to God. That, that we, let me buy you lunch today. Amen. I'm buying it for everybody in the office. No, I'm good. Amen. Glory to God. You're not going to sit here and let some chicken wings get you between in my heart and between my thighs. Amen. Glory to God. You got to guard it. I'm preaching better than y'all saying And, say and amen. listen, husbands, men, don't accept the compliments. Oh, amen. you look nice today. Well, thank you. Oh, look, look thank at you. you. Yeah. Thank no. you. I try. I try. I don't do all that. I don't do all that. <laughs> I don't do all that. I'll, I'll just say how they be. <laughs> right. I try, I Look, try. She's stroking your ego, and then there you go, oh, yeah, because, you know, um, my wife, she don't be doing all this. Now she taking notes. Oh, what your wife going to be doing? Now she doing everything that your wife don't do. I saw a post, and the post said, it was it was just foolishness. Um, how come the side chick know how to love you better than your main line? So... You know me, 411 for women. I had to click on the comments. I'm like, who going to get this right? I can't comment. I can't. But they, and so they had one comment um, on there, and it was a person saying, because you're over there telling her everything that you don't like in your household, and she's taking notes and doing everything that you don't like. Meanwhile, you're neglecting your wife at home, and so it's getting worse over there. That's that malfunction he was talking about. It's grass getting worse over there, and you're spending more time over here because you're watering the gr- grass, so it's looking green over here. And that's why it's it's a whole – and the enemy at the – it's beneath it all laughing because he finna break up a household. He finna have you thinking something over here that's not going to last once your marriage over. She ain't going to do none of that. No, she not. She ain't gonna because she, she, she going to say all that and do all that because guess what? She ain't got to wash your clothes. She ain't got to cook for you. She ain't got to deal with your attitude when you come home and you ain't feeling She ain't got to pick up your boxes way. with the streaks in the back of it. She ain't got to do none of that. All she got to do is listen to see, what we you don't say. Know, you see, we don't want to be real. We don't know. We don't know what all you sit there and act like, Joe. You can act like you ain't got no streaks if you want to. Oh, here, wow. here, here the thing. You don't have no streaks. Stop that. I ain't talking about me. I'm talking about Joe. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. So the point that I'm making is we don't know what all go into into being your wife. Right. There's a lot that go into being your wife. Your wife or your husband. Amen. Yeah. So you yeah. send that, they'll make you think, you see, I see a guy that going on. She's not going to want to smell them feet. She's not going to want to do it later on. <laughs> Amen. Your wife is, if she's willing to smell your feet, mine don't stink. I'm just saying. Amen. Glory to God. But if she's willing, amen. Then, I mean, glory, I done found somebody I need to keep. Yeah. Amen. Because everybody's not willing to, to do those things. Yeah. You, can, you love me and all my personalities. I'll, you know, I might wake up tomorrow and be mad. And you like. Yeah, you know, you like what happened? We just woke up. I, Come I just, my little just anger get, bunny. Right. I can't explain it right now. I'm just <laughs> mad. So, yeah. Amen. 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 And that's what marriage is all about. Marriage is willing to not live together for the rest of your life, but willing to die together for the rest of your Amen. life. I'm dying to myself, dying to my own will, dying yeah. to what I want. 
Dante, and I'm willing to do this for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I've been doing this a long time. Well, you got a long time mm -hmm. to go. Mm -hmm. I'll let Jesus mm -hmm. come back. Yeah. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. Yeah. I just and I just I just thought about something. I was talking to someone and they 